apologies for that. Um, but welcome back, everyone. We just talked about uh, some of the different conversations around roster construction. Is it better to go through the portal? Is it better to go through um, high school? I tend to lean high school, but there's definitely some debate that will be happening over the next little bit around that topic. But what I want to get into now is the groups that will define each conference. And I want to start with the SEC to me, it's the quarterbacks, and it's not even a question. They just have dudes all over the place. There are so many guys that can be at just real difference makers at the quarterback position, and they always have dudes. You know, they had the Heisman winner a year ago, but this year it's a little bit different because it feels like all the they have tons of really, really good players, but there's not this huge separation necessarily between the players going into the season. So I kind of want to break down the quote-unquote tiers as I see it, but also just the remarkable amount of guys that can make some noise this year. To me, it starts with Carson Beck and Quinn Ewers. Those are the guys that are at the top of the list, in my opinion. Those are the guys that will likely be at the peak of this conference for most of the season, if I had to imagine. Um, it could be totally different story coming out of the season, but going in, those are the two guys that I'm putting at the very top of the mountaintop right now. Then you get into some guys... Like Jalen Milrow, uh, Graham Mertz, Jackson Dart, Peyton Thorne, Brady Cook, these kind of, excuse me, I apologize, um, these kind of veteran presences that absolutely will play good football. You know, some could play really great football like Jalen Milrow or Jackson Dart. Um, Graham Mertz is someone that is a little bit interesting this upcoming year. Brady Cook, another one that could absolutely make a jump and get the, get uh, Missouri into the playoff Uh Peyton Thorne will likely be a little bit lower on this list, but still could play some really good football and definitely shock some people this upcoming season. So some really remarkable quarterbacks there that all have done really good things throughout their career. Um, but then you got uh, the kind of fresher faces to the party, I suppose. You have Nico Iamaliava, uh, Brock Vandegrift, Jackson Arnold, Connor Wegman, uh, G Garrett Nussmeyer. There are so many dudes to break down, and I think all of these dudes are just remarkably talented I think the arm talent in that group in particular is just insane to be totally honest with you I cannot wait to see what these guys can do this upcoming season because I think it could be pretty special if I'm being totally honest and then you get to kind of the wild cards of the group and they're not bad quarterbacks by any means uh, you have Lenora Sellers who I think is going to be a very very interesting guy to watch this year I don't necessarily think South Carolina is going to be all that great but I think that kid's going to be really, really good. Um, and then you have, you, you know, D Diego Pavia, Blake Shapin coming over uh, from Baylor into Mississippi State. And I think that's going to be a very interesting thing to watch as well because that was a pretty good quarterback over there at Baylor for quite some time. And going into an offense that is very quarterback friendly, maybe Mississippi State makes some noise. Who knows? Uh, and then you have Taylor Green down at Arkansas, who is one of those guys that. I think is good for at least one game where you turn on the TV and Arkansas is beating someone they're not supposed to be beating, and it's because Taylor Green is putting up just crazy numbers. So the SEC is going to have elite defenses. They're going to have elite offenses. They're going to have big-time teams all across the place. But I think the separator is going to be the quarterback play. Whoever has the best quarterback in the conference, I think will likely win the conference. Whoever, you know, puts their quarterback in the best position, which is kind of an offensive coordinator, head coaching type job, will likely be in the best position. But quarterback is always the most important position on the field. But in the SEC, it just feels that much more important, to be totally honest with you, especially this year. Um, but then let's move over to the Big Ten. And the group that I have defining this conference this upcoming year is the trenches um, and this is no secret to any Big Ten fan that is the way that the Big Ten works uh, if you win the line of scrimmage you likely win a lot of games in that conference so it'll be really interesting to watch this kind of unfold because obviously you're adding some new teams to the mix you know USC Washington UCLA maybe they're not quite as ready for the physicality. It seems like Oregon is, at least on paper, but we'll find out, I suppose, when the uh, they finally take the field. Obviously, you start this conversation with Oregon and Ohio State whenever you talk about the Big Ten, and both of those have really good line of scrimmage play. Obviously, Ohio State's offensive line is a little bit of a worry. There's some worry uh, around Oregon's defensive line, although I think the front line of that is really, really talented and will be more than fine. Um, and then you got Michigan and Penn State, who... Both are going to be really good on the offensive line because they have been for the past, you know, however many years. So I think you have, when you look at the top end of this uh, conference, when you look at the teams that will likely win this conference at the end of the day, 
that's where their team starts is in the trenches and winning those battles at the line of scrimmage. So it'll be really interesting to watch. But also when you look at kind of the dark horse teams in the conference, I have Nebraska, Iowa, you could also include USC in here, but they don't necessarily have the trenches that the other two do. Um, they're going to be really strong at the D line and the O line, and it's going to give them the ability to compete with some of these big time teams that maybe they weren't able to a couple of years ago, or maybe uh, some of the new teams coming in aren't able to, so they have a little bit of an opening there. So obviously, you know, it's going to be a huge part of the conversation. Running backs are a huge part of what they do in um, the Big Ten, and frankly, when you look across the Big Ten, the running back group is just absolutely insane, Um, and you need movement at the line of scrimmage if you're going to be able to win football games. Frankly, the way I said, you know, whoever has the best quarterback play in the SEC will win that conference. I think whoever has the most yards before contact rushing the ball will win the Big Ten. I I know that sounds kind of like a very niche thing to talk about, but the more push that an offensive line gets and the least uh, amount push that a D-line gets for any specific team will likely win this conference because you open up so many running lanes for running backs that are just remarkable in that conference this upcoming year. So the trenches, I think, will definitely define the Big Ten this upcoming year. But the Big 12, it's someone off the field. It's going to be the head coaches in my mind. I think when I look around the Big 12, there are so many really good head coaches, and there's so many guys that have been there for a really long time, guys that are rising stars in the industry, guys that have had really good moments in the past, have you know kind of cooled off a little bit, but are looking for a resurgence. There's so many different things to watch in this conference. Obviously, the story of college football at a lot of the time is a head coach in this conference and Dion, but I want to start with Kyle Whittingham um, and Mike Gundy in particular because those are two guys that are two of the most widely respected guys in all of the sport. They get, absolutely can do literally anything you need them to do. All they do is win games, and they've won them for probably about 20 years now. So they've been around as long as I have been alive, and they have been winning football games for as long as I've been alive. So very, very uh, talented coaches there, obviously. They kind of lead the group, at least in my eyes. Then you have Lance Leipold and Chris Kleiman, the Kansas group that is just absolutely ridiculous. Both very, very high risers in this industry, and they seem very happy where they're at. So maybe they're not moving up uh, anytime soon. Obviously, things change very quickly in the coaching world, but Lance Leipold just signed an extension. Chris, Cle- uh, Chris Kleiman uh, signed one, I think, a year or two ago. So there's some comfortability there, and uh, the Kansas schools will be more than happy with their head coaches going forward, I feel fairly confident about that um but then you have the uh you know Gus Malzahn's of the world who actually in fact has the fourth highest winning percentage of any head coach in this group so a very talented head coach in his own right and absolutely is someone that could make some noise um and then you have Matt Campbell you have Sonny Dykes you have Dave Aranda you do have Dion that could make some noise all of these guys you know have done good things in the past, whether it was at the current school that they're at or the one prior, they've been able to win a lot of football games. And it'll be really interesting to see if they're able to get that magic back. And Matt Campbell is the one that I'm watching most in particular because he had a run there where he was the hottest name on the coaching market. And it's kind of cooled off a little bit, but the guy can still coach football. There's no two ways about that. Um, But then you have guys like Willie Fritz, you have Neil Brown, you have Joey McGuire, all really remarkable guys that I think are starting to build up those programs into something that can be really, really successful. Um, But then you have the Kenny Dillinghams of the world, uh, Kalani Sataki, Brent uh, Brent Brennan, Scott, uh, excuse me, Scott Satterfield, um, who are all kind of towards the bottom, but I think are very, uh, very capable coaches, and particularly Kenny Dillingham and Brent Brennan, I think will have winners in this league in some time in the future. So this is going to be really interesting because all of these schools are very, very closely packed in this conference. That's why it's my favorite conference going into this year. And usually in those conferences, the adjustments made are the ones that make the difference. So the head coaches and really the coaching staff overall is going to be the deciding factor in the Big 12. I feel very confident about that. But then let's move over to the ACC and it's all about the transfers. Um, let's be totally honest. The ACC, when you look across that conference, it's really hard to find continuity on most of those teams. You know, you have Georgia Tech, you have SMU, you have Virginia Tech, but other than that, there is a lot of movement. I mean, Clemson is always going to be solid, but 
uh, Cam Ward, Grayson McCall, uh, Tyler Shuck coming in, uh, DJ Uyunglele, all of those guys have are, are went on to teams that have their eyes set on an ACC title in 2024. There's no two ways about that. They are going to be defining this conference in just so many different ways uh, this upcoming season. Obviously, Clemson with Cade Klubnick uh, is one of the only teams in the, or the only team, frankly, in the top five preseason odds to win the conference uh, with a returning quarterback. So very, very interesting. You also have guys, Haynes King at, at Georgia Tech, uh, Preston Stone at SMU, Kyron Jones at uh, Virginia Tech. So you do have some uh, normal guys, but there are a lot of transfer quarterbacks in this uh, group, but also it doesn't necessarily stop at transfer uh, quarterbacks. You know, you have transfers across the field at so many different places. Uh, North Carolina State really leaned into it, got Jordan Waters and Noah Rogers on the offensive side of the ball. You also got um, Miami, who attacked the portal really as hard as anyone in the country. Florida State's almost entirety of their offense is a, a portal class with Malik Benson and Roy Dell Williams coming in. You have Louisville, who is going to be Louisville and bring in essentially everyone. Colin Lacey is someone that uh, came over from South Florida at the wide receiver position for them. That is going to be really fascinating to watch this upcoming year. Um, but Overall, it's going to be really fascinating to watch how these teams unfold, but also on top of all of this, when you talk about, you know, DJ and you talk about all of the quarterbacks coming in and all of the changes, there's that one constant. There's the Clemson, who is the anti-portal team, the team that has not touched the portal with a 10-foot pole uh, since it started, and it'll be really interesting to see, you know, is Clemson going to win this conference and zig while everyone else is zagging and, and find a way to win this conference this upcoming year? So it's kind of that conversation of there's going to be transfers that decide this conference, you know, who's going to win and, you know, maybe the transfers are the one that, that decide it. Or it's Clemson's decision to not be a transfer team that decides this conference and they end up winning it and kind of making everyone else look dumb, frankly. So it'll be really interesting to watch that unfold. I think all of this stuff is really, really interesting every time because you never really know what's going to decide a conference, but it feels like those groups in particular are going to be really, really interesting to watch throughout the uh, year. But let's take our third break here, and when we come back, we're going to get back to Heisman Watch. We did the SEC yesterday. We're going to get into the Big Ten today, so definitely stick around for that, and we will be right back. <laughs> 